Ahoy there folks, I'm Captain Benzie and welcome to another developer Q&A video for Eve Echoes. Each week the developers take a series of questions posed by you the community, answer them and then post those responses to the official Eve Echoes Twitter account, Facebook page and somewhere deep in the game files as well. Each week I like to go through these four questions and the responses, adding my own personal thoughts and opinions as well based on information I've had through conversations with the devs, previous developer Q&As and things like the Discord AMAs that they've held in the past as well. Now if you do have a question for the developers, make sure that you ask. You can head into the description of this video, there is a link there that will take you through to a Google document where you can ask your question. If your question is one they choose to respond to, not only do you get an answer to the question, you get featured in one of my videos and you'll win a month of basic Omega also. Finally, if you do want to get be in with the chance of winning a month of Combo Omega, then comment on my videos, make sure you're active in the Catskull Discord, also linked in the description down below. I choose three lucky people every week to win a month of Combo Omega. Gotta be in it to win it, right? Anyway, with all that said and done then, let's jump right into this week's developer Q&A, which is for the week off, when my phone behaves, the, 7th, uh, the 5th to the 11th of July. Question number one, nice long one here. Will the other trainer ships that aren't in the road to set sail for new pilots ever see some kind of rotation into it? I only ask this because there are some cool ships that will never be used because honestly no one's going to pay 60 to 80 million isk for a trainer ship, which is why I was wondering if they might ever see a road to set sail rotation or maybe some other new pilot program reward. Now what we're talking about here is basically on the road to set sail, at the end of that on completion, you earn yourself a crate that gives you your choice of an omen trainer, a caracal trainer, a stabber trainer, or a, which one have I missed there, a vexer trainer. Now of course there are other trainer ships in the game, notably the Mala, Moa, Thorax and Rupture all have trainers and there is also the Thorax prototype technically I suppose, alongside the trainer of the Talwa, Korax, Algos and Dragoon. Now ultimately the point of the road to set sail there is that it's giving you a Tech 5 trainer cruiser. None of those other options are Tech 5 trainer cruisers. The, tech, the MOA, Rupture, Thorax, etc. are all tier 6 trainer cruisers, and the destroyers, well, obviously, they're destroyers. So I kind of get why they don't give those, it's just a starting block to give you an option to go with. Um, ultimately, yeah, it does mean that things like the Rupture trainer and that end up being pretty much useless, because by the time that you are at Tech 6, you have a choice between, say, going for a Rupture or a Rupture trainer. The Rupture trainer is actually often more expensive because it's seeded by the game, whereas the standard Rupture obviously is built by players and they can often do it for a cheaper cost than the Rupture Trainer, and the Rupture is just flat out a better ship. Obviously the Rupture Trainer does have lower insurance requirements, so it does have that going for it, but ultimately let's see what the developers say in response to this. We have Mike on the line here. The training ships for the road to set sail are provided to novice players and their combat capabilities are not as strong as those of ordinary ships. We're hoping that players could obtain their favourite ships through trade or manufacturing, rather than getting them from the road, uh, the system of road to set sail. And I kind of get that, I kind of get that, that you want people to basically try something with a free ship, go, oh, I quite enjoy this, and then upgrade from there. Now, the downside of this is that, yeah, it does mean that if you go for the Stabber or the Omen, you're training into medium lasers and medium uh, cannons. By the time you hit Tech 6, you have the Rupture and the Mallow that you can upgrade into quite comfortably from there. Whereas if you go for the Caracal or the Vexer, your options are much more limited based on the weapons that you have been training. And certainly if you then wanted a Tech 6 to go for either the Moa or the Thorax, well, there's no medium railgun ship before that, so I get the idea that maybe we could move the trainer ships down to Tech 5, the Mala trainer, Moa trainer, all that kind of thing, and maybe reduce their effectiveness a little bit, certainly. Reducing their cost, I think, would help here as well and get some use in place for those. I don't know, I think this is a fairly complex issue. Mike ultimately doesn't give us a very interesting response here, there's not as much deep going on, like we know what the trainer ships are. Um, it's interesting to see they're saying we're not going to change the road to set sail, and I kind of get that. But if you don't change the road to set sail, then you definitely need to change the market price for the trainers, the Tech 6 trainer ships. Because as it stands, they are just more expensive than much better ships. So there's no real reason to use them. Um, I think market adjustment is probably the better way to go forward on that one. 
Now, don't worry, there may only be one question on this first part, but if we move on to question two, you'll see all three of them are on this next ticket. So let's have a look at question number two. Currently, they say, it is difficult to audit corporation hangar logs because it's all put onto a single page. Are there any plans to add filter options for corporation hangar logs to make it easier searching deposits and withdrawals? And yeah, I kind of get that. That's a nice suggestion for a change, and Mike apparently agrees. We'll consider including this in our development plan. Thank you for your suggestions. Ultimately, the corporation hangar logs are important. You need to know who is actually taking things, um, who's taking what and when they're taking it, so that you can ask them why they're taking it and make sure that people aren't abusing that system. That requires in-game tools. I wholeheartedly believe that, yes, the developers should add that to the system, and I really hope they do. It's nice to see that they're saying, yeah, actually, perhaps we will do that. Absolutely, go for it, guys. Make that a thing. Give us the tools we need in-game. Question number three. Could you include the item name and sold amount in the description of wallet transaction details when an item gets sold in the market? My goodness, this has been asked so many times in the past. It's actually been covered in dev Q&As for a while. Um, I think there's been at least two mentions of this in previous dev Q&As, if I recall correctly. Um, but ultimately, yeah, this really should happen. When you get a notification, rather than one of your items has sold on the market, tell me what it's so well, what sold and for how much. That's a really useful piece of information that helps you keep tabs on what is actually selling. Now, of course, you can open up your sale orders um, and go through manually there, but if you don't remember all of your sale orders, you're like, well, which one sold? And if it's only part of a sale order, you've then got to remember how big the stack was originally and notice which ones have gone down. Excellent. Mike agrees. Very good idea. We'll add it to the development plan. Thank you for your suggestions. Make that one happen. That's very useful for anyone selling anything on the market. Fourth and finally then, can we get to plan our own path instead of choosing the safest route or shortest path? This is through uh, the autopilot system we're referring to here. Now Mike again responds, there is no plan in this regard for the time being, but the current game allows us to avoid some systems that we do not want to pass through. And I kind of wish this was a thing. Um, in EVE Online, when you undock, you can set an autopilot, or set a destination at least, um, to somewhere in the distance, and it'll tell you which gates you need to be jumping, etc. You can also set waypoints. So if you're sitting at Jita and you're like, right, I need to get to Dodixie and Amar, you can set a waypoint of Dodixie and then the final destination of Amar, and it'll just give you that nice course all the way through. I think plotting your own path would be an even better addition. It's something I wish we had more access to in EVE Online. Definitely in EVE Echoes, I would love to see that as a thing where you can actually manually set like waypoints. And if you did that system by system by system, yeah, you can plot your own route. And for someone like me who's big on exploration, that means that you can very quickly and easily plot a course to go through multiple different constellations and hit different systems, and you can just plot that and follow it in-game. Now, I tend to have Dotlan open, which is an EVE Online tool um, that gives me a map of each of the systems, but due to the addition of Pochven in EVE Online, not all the systems are actually there. Now, I've gone around and actually mapped these back in personally, um, but just the ability to have a tool that's in-game that allows me to plot a course nicely Nice and easily from A to B to C to D would be really, really useful, I think. I think that'd be a really nice addition to the game. I am wholeheartedly for that one. It's a shame that they say that there's no plan in this regard for the time being. That would really help explorers out a lot. It would help marketeers and haulers out as well, because you can just plan different systems. I mean, heck, if you're an early, early game hauler, and you're wanting to do those delivery missions, and you open up your Encounters tab and you see that you've got one delivery mission in the system you're in, one that's two jumps over, one that's four jumps over, and you've then got the destinations for all of those. Wouldn't it be nice if you could actually set waypoints to go and pick up all three of those missions, and then set waypoints to actually drop off all three of those missions? Would make life a lot easier for those players as well, and inspire a bit more hauling. Although, hauling, <laughs> that's a conversation that we should be having about how we can make that better, because a lot of the design decisions that have been made in EVE Echoes just really do kind of cut out the hauling aspect of the game. And that's a shame. That's a real shame because it can be a useful career choice. I mean, heck, I needed to move some stuff in EVE Online from a low sex station to Thera. I didn't have the time to do it myself and I could pay a guy 75 million to pick up my ship and to transport it to where it was going. That was nice and easy done through hauling contracts and things like that. But even just having proper in-game systems that give you better ways of doing that, it's a fun 
fun bit of the game that you can do. It's nice and chill, um, but it actually also includes, you know, increases PvP activity, um, because those haulers become big, heavy targets. Like, if you kill something like a Tyra, you know it's got going to have a few ships or things inside it that could be very, very lucrative. So, I don't know. There's a part of me that thinks actually having the ability to plot your own courses on the star maps in-game would be really useful. Anyway, that's it for this week's developer Q&A. Nice short one this time around. Do let me know your thoughts and opinions in the comment section down below. And um, what do you think? Are these good additions? Are they good suggestions? Do you think they could negatively affect the game in some way? Would well, love to know your thoughts. And remember, every time you're commenting on one of my videos, or every time you're posting in the public channels of my Catskull, uh, Catskull Discord, then you are in with the chance of winning yourself a month of Combo Omega. So, <laughs> what are you waiting for? Thank you for listening right the way through to the end, folks. Happy sailing, and see you in New Eden.